All right. Well, that's a little dark. There we go. All right, folks. We is live. Let's move that a little bit. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's see what we get on here. Cuban, Cohiba. All right, let me get out of Kitty's way because she's going to run the computer. All right, Mama. All right. All right. We got one on there. Shoot us a message in the box. Let's see who we got on there. Ah, cowboy coffee. Smokey, what's going on, my friend? Hey, Smokey, check this out, man. Bill's on. Hi, Bill. Cuban. Hey, Bill, what's going on, my man? <laughs> what are y'all doing today? Anything new, fellas? Sorry that we missed that Zoom meeting this morning. I guess we must have had a rougher week than we thought, and we all slept in. So I moved the camera back over behind the computer so that way we're not doing this, looking at the computer, and then the camera's over here talking to you guys. You like this better? Smokey just came from church. Yeah, I saw that earlier. You said you had to leave for church. That's cool, man. They're in their fast month. Oh. Bill's watching some old westerns on TV. Nice. Light up a cigar. There you go, my man. Yeah. Oh, sometimes at night when we go to bed, I'll have the TV on and we got the old westerns on there. Man, I'll tell you what, one of my favorites is McClintock. Man, that's a funny movie. I miss the way that things were in the old days, you know? Pretty sure we've seen that about 250 times. 251? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Today's world's kind of getting scary. No, it's not kind of getting scary. It is scary. I missed the way it was in the old days. Can you guys hear us okay? Is the volume and everything good? What's Smokey saying? You were just reading it. Smoking a sledgehammer with a licorice topping. Oh, licorice topping. Nice. Hey, AKJ made it. Hello. What's happening? Sound and pick are perfect. All right, cool. Yeah, I think we'll keep the camera over here. I think it's a little better view. It doesn't seem like we're ignoring people. I don't want it to feel that way. Does that camera angle look right, Mom, or do I got to angle the camera more this way? I don't know. You're not too sure? You just said it was perfect. So. All right, Mama, well, what you going to be smoking today? I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. Did you want your mocha? Sure. Mama likes your mocha. I got a where's that? I got another open tin of this. Did you find it? Yeah. This is open. Yeah. What'd you get there? 
I don't know what. I, oh, I'm going to do one of my uh, Southern Forged. There you go. I'm going to check fire real quick. Check in the fire. You know, did everyone see our new release video on that? Rum vanilla. Man, that stuff is good, good. Real good. It's going to be released this Tuesday. Yes, 6 p.m. Backpipes.com. Use our code. 6 p.m. I don't know if you heard what he said. Smokey asked if we minded the emoji. What's that? For our name. No, not at all. I, I think, think it's it, cute. I think it's cool too, man. Not at all. I said cute. I think it's cool. <laughs> a mess over here. It is all good, my friend. Don't worry about the small That's stuff. AKJ says he's going to try to get himself a couple cans. Just save a couple for me. Man, I would recommend it. I'll tell you what. That was the first tobacco that she gave a 10 on. And uh, I was I'm not an aromatic person. I like the real strong Englishes. And, man, I was really impressed. That was really, really good. Team Freedom. Team Freedom. That's right. We got our, uh, our keychain that Piper Dave gave us. On our uh, pipe bag, that big leather travel bag we got. Have you all seen that? It'll be traveling with us here yep. soon. This weekend, we're going to go back up to Farmington to visit our kids, and we'll bring our travel bags with us. We did some videos on it. If you go through our videos, I think we did three of them on traveling with pipes. So I think this one we're going to do traveling with pipes and cigars. Go Team Freedom. Hoorah. If there's time. Bill's lighting up a Gurkha Beast. Gurkha Beast. Okay. Yeah, this this Cohiba is not bad. I'll tell you the cigars I've liked lately was those Alec Bradley cigars, man. Those have a good flavor and an excellent draw. Can't nice, smooth draw on those. Man, that, man, that mocha stuff smells good. Cornel and Deal Mocha. Good thing I got another can of that, too. Yes. I don't know if you've seen our other video the other night, but we got that Serapico Silver Cap. Sir Jacopo Serapico, however you pronounce it. That thing, all Serapico pipes that we got smoke great. I think we got five or six of them. Can't beat them. Oh, my went out. Let me see See our YTPC Black Pearl Lighter. Thank you, Donnie. We've got our logo on the back of it. That was so nice of him. Hope he wants us to keep some for when he comes for a visit. Keep some of what? A mocha? Rum vanilla? Which one? Nice pipe. Thank yes. you. Those are nice pipes. Silver cap, reverse calabash. So you can kind of see the design on it now. Oh, yeah. Try it closer to the camera, see what happens. Cool. A little bit. Mm -hmm. well, he wants us to save him some of both. Okay. Yeah, that's no problem, man. I, we're going to get, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of those tins because she loves that shit. And I do too. So I'm gonna I'll take a ten of each. I'm gonna put your name on it. How's that? We'll sell her it till you get here. So yeah, guys, I just want to let everyone know real quick if uh, if yeah if there's something online that you guys are looking for and they're sold out, don't fear, my dear. If you go to Monty's Pipes and Cigars, look them up online. They have a website, but it's just about their shop. You can't order on their website. Don't worry about it. Call them. They'll mail it to you. Look around St. Patty's Day tomorrow. Saint, oh, yeah. Look at her nails. St. Patty's Day. St. Patty's Day nails. Mm -hmm. And we got our St. Patty's Day pipes for y'all. Little surprise. 
there's a pipe that I haven't showed you all. And this is an older Peterson that I bought off. Uh, oh, and there's a social media page. What the hell is it? Yes, don't forget to hit the like button, Bill said. Yes, everyone hit the like button. Let's like the heck out of it. It is the uh, pipe cottage. And there was a guy selling a pipe on here. And uh, I got a good deal for it. Only smoke once, he said. I believe him. It looked like it. Thank you, Smokey. Happy St. Patty's Day. I'm uh, talking to a friend, Jose, right now. He is the head waiter over at the Speakeasy restaurant where Mama have our date night tonight. And he takes really good care of us, so we're going to take care of him. Every time we go there, I give him a cigar. I don't know if we're about to smoke tonight. It's supposed to be raining. Well, they got those umbrellas. They also have that little patio cover thing when you first walk out. I'm not going to expect Jose to serve us out there in the rain, are you? When you first walk out, you're under a patio cover. We're not by the fire. Doesn't have. A, we'll bring a can. We'll build a fire next to the table. We'll, we'll build a hobo fire. Sure. <laughs> sure. No, thank you. He was looking through his drawers and found an unopened Arturo Fuente Chateau Fuente. I can't read the king something. It's hiding behind the heart. He's going to resuscitate it. Nice. Yeah, I had a, a few discussions over the phone with the Arturo Fuente representative. And I sure hope the owner of that place has a much better attitude than that guy had. We're going to wait till the pipe and cigar shops open and I'm going to call Mr. Fuente personally. We'll see what happens. Where is Mr. Fuente? Nicaragua. Nicaragua. They started their company in Cuba. And I believe in 1969, they moved to Nicaragua. Smokey asked him if he's going to do CPR on the cigar. That's right. <laughs> I like that, Smokey. What are you doing, a little CPR? AK they said that they shouldn't have treated you like that. Yeah, I know. That guy was a jerk, man. I'll tell you what. He was uh, pretty much full of himself. Let's put it that way, man. He had a bad attitude. He thought his shit didn't stink. He's about to be surprised. This is the way I think. I think I think a lot like my grandfather, my dad's dad. So I'll tell you a story about Grandpa Andy. When he was first starting his tree topping business, he uh, he got the power company contract for the whole state of New York. So wherever the Mohawk Power Company wanted to run power lines, Grandpa Andy cut down the trees, stopped them, whatever, made way for him. This was a contract for years. I think my dad said they moved 24 or 25 times or something like that. Cause when they would, they'd move to a city, they clear out all the trees and they get the city up and running. Then they'd have to move to the next city and do the same thing. So, so on and so forth. So this is funny when I tell you this. So when he was starting his company, he needed to buy a truck and four lumbar chainsaws. So he needed a loan for $125. This is in the fifties, right? So he comes home. My grandma says, we can't do that, Andy. That's all we have in our savings. He said, no problem. So he went to a bank. At the bank, the manager laughed at him and kicked him out of the bank. So grandpa walked across the street to another bank, got the loan, started his business. One year later, he went back to that bank where that asshole was, bought the bank, fired the manager, then resold the bank. That's how that shit works. You watch. What happened to his business? Grandpa died. Usually they pass down a business like that if it's big. I don't think dad wanted anything to do with it. Dad only had two sisters. They ain't going to be out there chopping trees with chainsaws and shit. So dad. Oh, they kept, could have kept the same group. Well, let's see. Dad was 16 years old when Grandpa Andy died. My dad was a freshman in high school. And 
that's when he first met my mom. But my father, I think, was more of a mechanical guy. His whole my dad was a mechanic for fifty some years, so I think that was more his thing, not so much the tree topping. And uh, I guess that's that's the end of that story. So, I mean, you think to help them get by, they could have maybe sold the business. I don't know what happened to it. That's a good question, actually. We should ask Dad. Because I don't know. All right. Do we got anyone else new on there? Boy, that tobacco smells great. Mm -hmm. It smells like hot cocoa. Like when you make hot cocoa and you're boiling it on the stove. That's what it smells like. It's great for these wintry days. Oh, yeah, man. It snowed last night. We had a ice fog last night here. And uh, it's going to snow again today. Great story. That's a true story, man. That's how Grandpa was. Grandpa was no joke, man. And he was a uh, he was a big man. He, you know, my dad was 6'6", 320 pounds, and Grandpa Andy was bigger. He was an inch shorter, I think. But he was uh, about three fifty. And when he died, his shoulders were so broad they didn't have a coffin. His shoulders would fit in. He was a big man. And uh, they were in a what, Patsy Cassell's. It was a bar in upstate New York. It was a bar and grill. And Patsy was a midget. And uh, Grandpa was a big guy. And him and Patsy were best friends. So this, there was a traveling salesman going through town. And this guy was drunk off his ass. Well, my grandfather was a loner. He liked being left alone, especially after work. He'd go eat dinner in a corner, drink a beer, go home. And uh, <laughs> this guy kept bugging him and bugging him and bragging about the new car that he bought, which was a 1956 Chrysler Imperial. Finally, Grandpa looked at him, and he goes, look, man, I'll make you a deal if I could pick up the front of that car for 100 bucks. You leave me the hell alone. The guy said, shit, you're on. Patsy started laughing, pulls 100 bucks out of the register because he already knew Andy, and he picked up the front end of that car and took that guy's 100 bucks, and that guy didn't even come back in the bar. He got in his car and left. So he was a huge guy. That, game, that man was immense. The strength out of him, the stories my grandma told me. She told me that story. She told me a story about the same bar. A guy pulled a 38 on him, and Grandpa grabbed his hand, and you can hear the bones breaking in his hand when he was just sitting there squeezing the guy's hand. I mean, this guy was strong. But the thing was that I don't understand about my dad and grandpa is I don't understand why you would want to piss these men off. You know, your dad's the same way. He was a big man. and but, but these men that we're talking about were the nicest men you'd ever meet in your life. These guys would be the first ones to help you. You know, I've seen my father do it many times to people and never charged him a dime did it out of his heart but those are the guys you want on your side for dang sure smoky says africa's hot 108 holy moly smoky right now our high is 44 degrees on the wolfman and kitty weather station over there got five mile an hour winds out of the west and moving in yeah it was snowing earlier we got more snow moving in we got the old cannonball over there chooching out some heat right now in the black pearl at 71.2 34% humidity. We got the humidifier over there going because out here, man, I don't know about I, where well, you are smoking in Africa. I'm, I'm sure you got much higher humidity, but out here, man, shit, it's like 10% humidity. I mean, we got up into the hundreds in Phoenix, but it was a dry heat. Real yeah, dry. no humidity. So what we're doing now is we're keeping uh, YTA. Hi. Hey, YTA, what's going on, man? Thanks for, for coming in. Um, we put a humidifier in our bedroom and in the black pearl here. So where the sliding glass door was in our bedroom to walk out on the patio, we basically enclosed it and made the black pearl. So now we keep the humidity between 35 and 40% in here, and it feels so much better on your skin and your hair is not so dry. And, and it's better for all the tobacco we got in here. So Smokey said it's 20 past 10 at night and 78 degrees. Nice. That's perfect. Sounds like Phoenix. Yeah. This is that'd be about the time of the night I'd take my kids over to the pool so we could have a swim. What was that? Yes. How dumb could you be? What did he say? To burn such bridges? Yeah, I agree, man. It's it's you know, I know I'm telling you guys all these wild stories of kind of stuff they did, but these men were not mean men by any means. I mean, these guys would walk away from so much shit that people would throw at them. You would really have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing for them to do something. 
uh, grandma told me a story about a guy that broke a beer bottle and cut my grandfather all the way down his arm. And Andy picked him up over his head. And Patsy Cassell said, Andy, put him down. You're going to kill him. And he says, I'm going to try. And he put his he threw the guy through a War Wolves or a jukebox. Stovepipe. Stovepipe. What's going on, my man? And you missed the stovepipe. We just used the stovepipe lighter. And I've been using uh deer antler tamper. Yep, she's smoking the Cornell and Deal uh, mocha. Tastes just it smells just like hot chocolate. And today I'm burning a Cuban cohiba. This one is a Macassar, M-A-C-A-S-S-A-R, Macassar. Is that how you pronounce that, Mom? Oh, I'm sure it's something more fancy than that. Oh, I'm sure, because this redneck hillbilly is probably not pronouncing it right. Macassar for, Macassar. for a bunch of whiteies. So, yeah, so Stovepipe, and there's a few other fellers on here, and there's some people that are not on here, and it's okay. Tomorrow, we're packing up more stuff, and we're going to ship all that shit out. I'll ship it out on Monday probably when I go to work. It's too hard for us during the week to do stuff. We're just too damn busy with the business and her job. And, and Saturday's our date night after our Saturday Night Live here. Stovepipe said he's smoking Flanagan and a Peterson. Something. Oh, there we go. Peterson St. Patty's Canadian. Nice, man. AKJ said, just when I think I've bought enough tobacco, you pull me back in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Hey, no such thing as too much tobacco. Especially with what's going on in our world today, man. They're going to, they're trying to ban all flavored tobaccos and they're going to put 100% tax, excuse me, on everything and these, these people are evil, man. They're just, like I said before, and I'll say it again, there is no such thing as inflation. It's greed. Inflation's a fancy term for greed. They're full of shit. So since we're pulling you back in, don't forget your rum vanilla on Tuesday. Make sure you rum get vanilla. your mocha. Mochas. Cornell and Deal mocha and your Cornell and Deal. Very good. It's very good. Very, very good? Yeah. She smoked some of that last night. It was good. It smelled great. It's kind of it's very similar to uh, Boswell's. Yeah, Boswell's man. Very cobbler. Boswell's. I'll tell you what. He makes some damn good blends. He knows what he's doing. That boy don't mess around. Yeah, I don't know if I've had anything from Boswell's that I didn't like. Yeah, smoking. I agree. You can't have too much backy. That's right. No, that's very true. You can't have too much backy, and that stuff that stovepipe sent us. You know, that had 10 years of age on it. Man, that was so good. I got all that jarred up now in a mason jar, Bounty. And I'm going to let it sit for about another month. And I'm going to try it again. I want it to kind of settle in that jar a little bit. He loved it. It I, smelled real strong. Man, that shit was good. Thank I thought you. maybe it would kill me. So <laughs> I didn't try any. It was very strong. Maybe that's what it does when it ages, huh? Well, no. See, what happens when you age tobacco when you get a new tobacco, the acidity level is high and the alkaline level is low. So when you when you let it sit there and cellar, they swap. The acidity goes down and the alkaline level goes up, and that's what makes it smooth. Basically, in a nutshell. Bill said he did email Jim at Emerson Southern Forge to got his blend list, so I hope he can get some soon. Yeah. Also very good. Yeah, man. Other, Emerson Southern Forge tobacco was excellent. Got some of that right here. So this is Queen's, Queen's Rain. I'm probably going to smoke that here in a little bit. But they already come jarred up. I like that. The other thing I like about his is let's say you ordered this blend. So right away, he'll blend it. Then he'll put it in the press for a couple weeks so it's fresh. And then when it's done out of the press, then he'll jar it up and send it to you. So it'll take a little while to get to you, but that's normal. AKJ said he's going to get some ASAP. That's good stuff. WT pipes tinkering in the shop. I'm firing up a bowl of HHO dark fired and one of my shop pipes. Nice. Not good enough for seconds, so they become shop smokers. Why not? Still smoke just fine, I'm sure. That's a great idea, man. 
Yeah, so when you guys order from uh, Emerson Southern Forge, just tell them that Jane D's Pipe Dreams from YouTube sent you. We, we're not getting nothing from it. We're just trying to help them out. That's all. So like we said in the video the other night, all those 10% uh, off coupons and all that deals that we're trying to get for you guys, we're just trying to help out new pipe smokers, man. We're not making nothing from it at all. If you go in our description, there's that, that new cigar place. They sell cigar accessories, and you could use the code WOLFMAN10, get 10% off. We're not making nothing off it, guys. It's just trying to help people out. That's all. So when we do our our 300 sub, and when we hit 300 subs, that gall that we're giving away is going to be a new pipe, a case, cleaners, tool, tobacco. it will be a whole complete starter kit for somebody. Um, Bill said he did tell about the video we did. He said he will have to check it out. Cool. Thank you. You're a good wolf, man. <laughs> But, um, and I think something else that, like I said before, what we're going to do is I'm not going to put Ga on the title of our videos. So when we start giving stuff away, you're just going to have to watch the video and see where in the video it's at. Because when I put Ga on the title, I get a hundred people that I've never seen before trying to get in on the contest. And I don't think that's right. Probably search for Ga. Yeah. Too many moochers get a job and a haircut so what did AKJC got the uh, giveaways hey beans is on here he's on a shop break what's going on beans nice Brian thank you so much for stopping by yeah I I'd messaged him earlier about his pipes so we have a you know, we collect pipes. We have a, I, I like, I mean, I like factory pipes. They're cool. Seven Ellie makes some good pipes. The old Petersons were good, but I like custom pipes. And uh, like LCS Briar, um, Nick over at LJ Pretty, wait till you see this one coming in, guys. He's making us a really cool custom pipe. And uh, it has to do with the Navy, which is, he asked me a lot of questions and sent some pictures back and forth, and he hand-carved this thing, and it's amazing. But we don't have a Dorian pipe. That's beans. That's beans. Um, see, Smokey said, did you send out on this package? Can't wait to receive the tobaccos. Okay, so Smokey, Adam me emailed me, and he got nervous about us sending him tobacco. So... He said, like, send him a gift card or something. And I said, no, nah, I ain't going to send him a gift card. That's kind of cheap. So. What if you put it in a coffee can? So this is what we're working at. I'm trying to figure out a sly way of getting it through customs. Let's just put it that way. So, yeah, everything I send him, I'm going to send him double because half is yours. And uh, I just, I mean, I don't want to get caught because then it's going to get ruined. It's just going to get thrown away or they're going to take it and smoke it, whatever. You know how that shit goes. Like when you were a kid and the cops would take your beer and tell you to go home, you know damn well they were drinking your shit. So um, I don't know what to do. I don't want to send him a gift card because that's too cheap. I want to do something really nice for him. So then he's not going to get the tobacco, right? I don't know how wants. to. I don't know how to do this. But see, Smokey, he's gotten gauze, and people have sent him tobacco, right? How did they get it through, Smokey? Give us the inside intel. I say if you put it in a bag. And put the bag in a mug with a little diffuser thing and then just a little note that says enjoy your loose leaf tea. All right. I mean, if they want to go home and make themselves some loose leaf tea, I bet they'll never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> some Carter Hall tea. That's up. Uh, WTA said label it as T. All right. Smokey said yes. All right. We'll do that. Because we got to get that to him. It's going to take a while to get to him anyway. But uh, I was just worried about that because he kind of made me nervous when he said that. I'm like, all right, shit. Did they change something down there? I just saw an article that they're getting, uh, they're overtaxing tobacco farmers in South Africa. 
to basically get rid of their industry. I know what they're doing. They're destroying the industry. So I didn't know if they changed something or whatever down there, and it, it's harder to get packages through. But Put it in that jar that I bought you, that tea that you don't like. Well, but I, so we're going to have to put different baggies in the jar because we're sending them like four or five different tobaccos that they can't get to try. Well, no, but I'm just put it in the little jars and label them each with tea and get them one of the little tea ball things that go with it. Okay, so, so it's, like, tea, it's like four different tobaccos, but I'm sending some to Adam and some to Smokey. So we're going to have eight jars we're going to send to Africa. See, this is the problem. Well, then I'll put the baggies in the jar. Like do four in each jar. Or something. And then name the baggies like whatever the tobacco yeah. is. Rum, vanilla, tea. Mocha, tea. Hey. Berry, cobbler, tea. Now we're getting <laughs> Okay, so uh, stovepipe, uh, email Emerson Southern Forged. Tell him you saw it on our video, whatever, Jane D's Pipe Dreams, and just ask him to email you his tobacco list, which is six pages, guys. I mean, it's, it is just you name it, it's full of tobaccos. And it's cool because, look, he color codes them for different types of blends, okay? So, like, English blends are blue label. Uh, Cigar Leaf Series, white label. Uh, what do we got here? Balkans are red label, so on and so forth. Burleys are purple. Um, so, it's, it's kind of cool. So, like, when you get his tobaccos, you'll either have a blue label, black label, you know, whatever you buy. So it's kind of cool. I like the way he does it. Let's know if he has a website. Um, I don't think so, Stovepipe. You got to email him. And then, because he emailed us this list, and then I we just printed it out. I mean, it doesn't say. It says he has Instagram, Facebook. He puts his email on there. He doesn't have a website listed. Yeah, his email is Emerson Southern at Yahoo.com. Emerson Southern at yahoo.com. Um, Bean says, says that he'll email Donnie the list. Oh, there you go. Um, Shit, I never so thought of that. Said that. We could do that too. That's dumb. Is it Stumbo? Said two tons of tobacco as is. Really? Mm -hmm. Stumble sent two tins. Okay, so maybe it's not that big of a deal then. I just don't want it to get taken. I want you guys to enjoy it. We're, we're going to throw some other stuff in there and surprise you all. You guys have been so cool. So, yeah, no problem, Donnie. Beans had a better idea. Duh, should have thought of that. Hmm. I got the email. I could just forward it to Donnie. So he sent two seven ounce tins. Nice. No problem. All right. We'll get a stove pipe last. <laughs> um, all right. We'll get it figured out. So, yeah, uh, beans. Um, we'd like to get in contact with you about making a, a nice pipe, but I, I don't know. I, I'm not that familiar with the style of pipes you make beans, but. Um, I know you make a lot of straight pipes like billiards and stuff, but we like a lot of curved pipes. Like we just got this silver cap Serapico. I love this pipe. But do you make curved pipes, something similar to this? The deeper the curve, the better because I like clinching. That's why I like the Sherlock Holmes series. Let it rest. Hey, KJ said that he uses miniature chalkboards that. He gorilla glued onto his jars. We got little like chalkboard style stickers. Yeah, that's that's what we got too. Let me see how I got me here. Oh, that's our blend, the black pearl blend that we pressed. I'm gonna be shipping some of that off to Powder Piper to surprise him. Yeah, are you talking about these? Orlet Golden Slice from 2015. Bean sent it. 
Smokey said, look at it. Hey, Smokey. Look at it. That's for you, Beans. We do that in almost every video just for you, Beans. It's true, we does. It's true. And we do the hump day for Uncle Willie. I don't think he watches our videos that much, yo. Maybe he's a busy feller. He's retired. Doesn't mean you're not busy. I could stay very busy. If he's I was busy retired. smoking pipes and cigars. Oh. He's probably, we're probably two uh, young whippersnappers. Too, too high strung for him. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe you are. I'm what are you trying to say? I'm not high strung. What are you trying to say? On occasion, usually cater to what the crowd wants. From beans. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. Yeah, I want to get. What does the crowd want, though? What do you want? I don't know. Sometimes I feel like we struggle with what the crowd wants. What does the crowd want? I think he's talking about the shape of pipes. Oh. Let me see. Sacrifice my sleep to watch the white. <laughs> I know, man. He never sleep. He's always when on here. When do you sleep? How much sleep do you get? And let's, I'm not going to say 24 hours because I think you're probably up 24 hours. So how much sleep do you get in 72 hours? Four. <laughs> so this is the, this is the black pearl blend that we made. Uh, the light one is just the pressed tobacco and the dark one is the tobacco. one that we had under heat and press. So uh, this stuff came out excellent. Uh, haven't tried the, this one yet. But I'm probably going to ship that off to Powder Piper. And I'll press another one for us. But <laughs> Four hours. See, I told you. Let me go check the wood stove real quick, guys. I'll be right back. Ask Kitty anything you want. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, the shapes. Yeah, like the, I, I guess you would call it like a full bent, like Rhodesian or something like that. We like those style of pipes because they're comfortable. You can, if you're driving or. Hell, reading a book, whatever. You know, uh, to me, they're just more comfortable. But she likes the bent pipes too, huh, Mama? Sure. Sure. I'll be right back. I'm going to check the fire. Mm -hmm. Where's the lighter? Right here. Thank you. No, sure. I mean, have you seen his pipes? What are you talking about? Beans. Have I seen his pipes? Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful pipes. Oh, okay. Took off with the lighter. You and I were looking at his pipes the other day. Oh, okay. Smokey's getting hungry. We are too, Smokey. We're getting ready for our date night tonight. He's getting friend. some spring rolls and samosa. What's samosa? I like spring rolls, but I've not heard of samosa. Stovepipe used to like the bent pipes. Now he seems to grab the straight ones. I honestly like them all. <laughs> I'm not prejudiced when it comes to pipes. I'm an equal opportunity pipe smoker. AKJ seems to think I'm a smart cookie. Think you are? He seems to think I'm a smart cookie. You are. He wants to know my thoughts on the YTPC. Um, thoughts as far as what? I mean, yeah, thoughts as far as what? I find it very interesting. Look at it. Cohibo. I work a lot of hours. So I don't have a lot of time to watch, like, everything. There's a lot of good information put out on the YTPC. I met a lot of nice people like you all. I mean, we all became friends, and it's so cool talking to you guys. Everyone's nice. Yeah, we've. Definitely met some nice people. Um, I like the wide range of videos. You know, I like that there's some that you can learn from, that there's some that's just entertaining. Um, the curmudgeon piper, that guy cracks me up. Some that just helps us, like, get to know you better. So I like, I guess, the diversity for sure. You know what I like about the YTPC? It doesn't, I know I've said this before. I don't, it doesn't matter your color, race, religion, where you're from. None of that stuff matters. Everyone just gets along, and that's the way the world should be, period. But it's not. 
Um, my opinion, I think the United States is probably the most prejudiced place I've ever been, but sad. It is the way it is, but you know, we don't feel that way. But. I mean, I'm always all about like learning the knowledge, learning about people. Yeah. Learning about if I don't agree with them, I like to hear what they have to say. Viewer, so I sit silent a lot um, and just kind of ponder on it because I know he likes to debate. I don't. I just figure. If someone's wrong, well, I let them know it. Well, I mean, I think everyone's entitled to their opinion. They are. I don't always have to agree with it. But I also know, um, which I guess I've learned over the years, is you can debate it and argue it all you want. But you have maybe a 5% chance or less of changing anybody's mind anyway. So I feel like my energy can go to other places in a better, more productive way than arguing with somebody that I'm sure. going to change their mind. And they don't have to see things the way I do. So, And it's okay. It's okay with me. Well, the things that I like to argue about, I'll give you guys a great example. When all this COVID crap first started, they had like arrows down the aisles of the grocery stores. You can only walk one way. Remember all that bullshit? So we have Dozy Dad. Dozy Dad. Bill Billy Piper. Hey, Dozy Dad. We're going to be going to uh, uh, Monty's before we go to dinner tonight. I'll shoot you a message before we leave. Cool? He wanted to meet us there and, and uh, try some tobacco. Um, some tobacco. So anyway, I walk down the aisle, grab what I'm grabbing, and I'm walking back against the arrows. And this lady, right, this, this lady was probably 400 pounds. She's like, Oh, my God, didn't you see the arrows? And I said, shit, no, I didn't see the Indians. <laughs> Everyone started laughing, right? Then she started yelling at me because I didn't have on a mask. And I looked at her and I said, really, ma'am, you're worried about your health? You're 400 pounds overweight, you know? It, it's kind of, I don't have time for ignorance. That kind of shit gets me going, man. But anyway. And I'm more of a pick your battles Um I think the last time I confronted anyone was maybe six months ago or something. My daughter came out and she has a service dog um, because she is suffering from some health conditions. And um, we went to a like a little craft fair and there's this little kid. And of course, service dog, he wears patches saying, you know, do not talk to me. Don't oh, distract yeah. me. Don't yeah. pet um, cause he has a task and he needs to focus. And so, I mean, it happens, I think a lot to her, but this little kid, a beautiful dog comes running up and, um, she very nicely says, please don't touch the dog. And he just won't stop. And so my daughter got really stern and said, you cannot pet the dog. Well, the little boy, I don't know, he might've been four, started crying. Aww. And so mom runs over and Oh, she's just a mean lady. She's so mean. And I mean, that kind of got me. And so I did say something. I said, you know, you should teach your kid, first of all, not to approach any dog that he doesn't know. He could get bit. True. <laughs> you know. That's a good and, point. And um, second of all, um, I don't know if it's well known, but I feel like there should be more education about people with disabilities and service animals and what they do. I mean, I would not run up and touch somebody's oxygen tank, right? And start turning the knobs. That's their medical equipment. And a service animal is viewed as medical equipment for somebody with a disability. So anyways, I, I said something to her. Walk up to their oxygen with a lighter? I'm kidding. And just walked away. And I, she seemed a little stunned. And I got a little bit of a scowl, but that's okay. <laughs> so to answer your question, you said Kitty you seems pretty sharp. I'll ever tell you this story. She got a double master's degree, right? Social work, psychology, all that tic tacs and knickknacks and all the other bullshit you get when you I don't understand it. It's not bullshit. I just don't understand it. How long did it take you to get your double masters? Um, I did my master's program in a year. Um, I qualified She's very smart. due to my grades and lots of recommendations from professors for what they call the advanced standing program. Um, so I completed my both of my master's and one certif 
certification, um, which is called a LADAC. And See, LADAC, Tic Tacs, Knick Knacks, I don't understand that shit. Because he dad said that his son runs up to strange dogs all the time. Well, and I think kids do that. Read the rest. I Oh, it's a habit, but he's autistic and doesn't learn so quick, which is fine. And I, I know kids will do these things, but rather than teaching her kid that we're being mean by making a request politely, I think was wrong instead of just reiterating or using that as a teaching moment for him and just saying, they're not mean. We just can't pet their dog. But I felt like she was just giving him a bad outlook on people rather than trying to teach him something because we weren't trying to be mean to him. I mean, um, but she made it mean, like, sound like we were being mean. And that's probably what the little kid walked away believing that we were just mean people that wouldn't let him touch the dog. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dozy Dad, to answer your question about the time. So we have dinner reservations at 645. So I'm guessing, you know, after we get done with our live, we got to shit, shave and shower and all that stuff and get suited up. And uh, I don't know, probably... 5.30 or 6-ish, we'll probably be at Monty's, I'm guessing. Thank you, AKJ Pipeman. <laughs> uh, Dozy Dad, do you remember what time Monty's closes on Saturday? He has his son with him until 6. Bring your son, I don't care. Yes, I um, actually use my degrees now, and I work with kids. And we currently have Let's see what the dogs are barking at. three or four on my caseload that are autistic. So I'm very familiar with working with autistic kids. They're so great and so special. I really love them. Um, but yeah, I don't know why you couldn't bring your son with you to Monty's. Bye, Beans. We've definitely taken, I mean, my son's a little bit older probably than yours, but we've definitely taken him with us. He's um, 19. So. Monty's closes at six. Um, I feel like we've been there way past six, but probably because we, probably because we know Matt. <laughs> um, Maybe that'd be FedEx, but ain't going out there. Uh, Dozy Dad said Monty's closes at six. Okay. Beans left. He had to go back to work. Thank you, Beans. We'll a get in contact about a bite. AKJ says sometimes people embrace being wrong so that they can placate to emotions. Reasonable people rise above that with respect for feelings, not just placating to them. Yeah. True. That is true. I would have been more than happy to have like a reasonable civil conversation with that lady. Um, I guess maybe Mama Bear came out a little when she was telling her son that daughter was mean because <laughs> I know she's not. Um, anyways. Oh, this is something else you haven't tried yet either, Kitty. Moon trace. Moon trance. Moon trance. But you're stuck on the trace. Trace. Traces. <laughs> That's right. I don't know if they're barking out. Oh, he came over here by the bedroom door. He probably heard me. Oh. So good to hear other people with common sense like you guys. Thank you. We've started. Well, Smokey said he started a support group for people with depression. Awesome. That's a great idea. I think people with depression often feel very alone in the way that they're feeling. We thought about um, doing a thing for veterans. Um, you know, all these dogs that get, you know, turned into the pound and most of them wind up dying and sad they get put down. So we thought about having a kennel with a bunch of dogs and then having vets over and working with them for, you know, six, eight months, a year, whatever. And wh whichever dog that they connect with, at the end of that program, they can take the dog. So, 
me, her father, her grandfather, all Navy vets. So, and I feel bad for, you know, you go to the VA and you, you got a psychologist in a white coat sitting behind a counter and a clipboard that has never been to combat trying to talk to a combat vet about his problems. Don't work that way. So does that mean Dozy Dad does not want to meet today? What's that? I was wondering if Dozy Dad didn't want to meet today then. Oh, it's totally up to him. So he said thanks for your service. Thanks for doing that support group. Yeah, thank you for that. I think that's really important. I think that's more important. I mean, really, you know, you look back on it. Like when you first joined, you're all young, you're gung-ho, you're naive. You're defending your country. No, you're not. When was the last time America got attacked? We have... 9-11. No, that was... Our government did that bullshit. We weren't attacked. That Those buildings were demoed. And uh, anyway, I've seen the videotapes, guys. You know, that's some of the shit that I did in the Navy. Anyway, so... Uh, <clears throat> we we have our nose is in too many people's business. As I, My opinion... America has their, their, their bug in too many other countries. You should stay out of their business. Why do you go Navy? Old grumpy ET radio man, sub guy here. Nice. Yeah. <coughs> one thing I hated was fucking subs, man. God damn. When I'm six foot four. That don't help. But uh, hit your damn head on all the bulkheads. But um, yeah, I didn't like subs, man. I, we did a, we did have fun though. Like, putting the styrofoam out in your ditty bag, you know, hanging it off the sail, do a deep dive, come up and you got styrofoam cups that started out this big and they were this big when they came back up, shit like that. Yeah, I, that was fun. That was about it. Sounds like a blast. Yeah. I didn't like subs, man. I remember one time we, we dove and I asked the skipper, I said, how deep are we? He goes, I can't tell you. And I said, I bet you I got more security clearances you do. And he goes, I don't care. I ain't telling you. All right, then let's go fucking back up, dude. <laughs> I had I had four pretty deep security clearances, but one was so deep. Here's a story for you. So when I first got out, I went to a gun store to buy a gun. So you fill out all the bullshit paperwork for the ETF, right? And they run you, they call it in, run your background, all that shit, right? And I see the guys, the look on this guy's face, and he goes, hold on a minute. And he goes like this with the phone, and he goes, is all this information correct? And I said, yeah. He goes, they can't find you. And I said, no, hold on, I got to make a phone call. I, then my clearance was still active. Um, so you goes, he dad said he can't risk bringing his son to Monty's, but you can swing by the house to grab that backy. He's literally two minutes away. Oh, wow. All right, well, it just depends on what time we get there. Like I said, once we're done with this, we got a shit shave and shower and then run down there. And, uh, it never fails, man. Every time we think we're leaving early enough, shit. We wind up either getting at the restaurant right on time or we're a few minutes late. That's because he takes longer to get ready than a beauty pageant queen. What are you trying to say? Sure. No problem. After six, he's all clear. Cool. That might work out better because our original reservations were for, I think, six. And then they messaged us back and said they can not They can only do 645, so that probably worked. Kirby Allison just came out with his new walk-in humidor that was installed at his house. Goals. Yeah, so... In our one of our spare bedrooms is actually our office, and I'm thinking about turning that closet into a walk in humidor. That'd be pretty cool, huh? Smokey said on his vids, DIB is the name, depression is being slain. D for David, I for Israel, B for Brody, S for Sasquatch. Nice. Kirby's system is insane, says Lucy Dad. That was awesome. I saw that video, said Smokey. Yeah, so my, my father has a, a cherry wood gun cabinet with the glass and the doors and everything, and my dad never used it. My Uncle Paul made it for him 40 years ago, probably, 
And this thing looks brand new because it just sat in the their spare bedroom of the house. My dad never even put a gun in it. So he's going to give us that. We're going to put that here in the black pearl. I'm going to seal the doors up on it. And I'm going to make that, that cherry wood uh, gun cabinet a humidor for the black pearl. And then when I when I convert the closet in our in our office, that's just going to be for cellar and storage, you know, pipe and cigars, pipe, tobacco and cigars. Look under that one. Sure. Got a lot of stuff in that closet. Well, we got a lot of Lionel train stuff, but we moved all that out to our storage unit in the yard, in the backyard. And they can move that out there, I guess. I think I like some survival stuff in there, too. Yeah, we got all of our bug in, bug out bags, medical bags. Um, bunch of I love survival equipment. I love land navigation with a map and a compass. That's just just fun, to me, man. I always enjoyed that shit. When I first learned that stuff in the military, man, I I just took a liking to it. I understood it. You know. So you might have to ponder. Here's a question for you. You ever watch like military movies and they go, all right, it's four clicks over there or whatever that is, right? What does four clicks mean? Most people don't know. He loves all, oh, he loves sit down videos with the David off guy. He's got to try that number too. So uh, last weekend when we were at Monty's before dinner, I asked Matthew, what's your favorite cigar? David off, right? So he gave me one of his that he always smokes at his favorite, and I bought another one. So his is a signature series, and I can't remember what the name of the one that, that I bought. It was a smaller one. But, man, they were both good. I'm definitely going to get some more of them tonight. But I don't think I've watched any of the David Off videos. Like, thank you for letting me know, man. I'll, I'll check them out. Uh, Adam Hopkins. Um, um, Dozy Dad said, I know. I saw that still salty and jealous. <laughs> what is it? Sahakian? Sahakians? What is that, Smokey? Remember, forgive us. I'm, I'm a hillbilly. Are you? I guess. I don't know what that means. I don't know. It's probably a brand of cigars. Oh, Edwards. Oh, okay, yeah. What do you think of those Gurkhas, man? I had one, and I, I was kind of, eh. Did that make you want a Gurk? Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> the guys from Davidoff in London. Mm. Edwards, Gurk. Okay, I see. I've been watching, um, well, right before our live, we were watching that guy that always goes down to Cuba. <clears throat> does all those videos. Kirby? Is that his name? Man, he's got some cool videos. You like Gurkha Beast. Oh, I'll look into that. Gurkha Beast. I don't know if I've heard of that one. Those Gurkhas are kind of meh. That's what I we thought too, man. Six pack back in February, smoked them all in one day. Kind of me. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I thought too, man. But I don't know. We probably got, let's see, we got one, two, three. We got five humidors in here. They're all full now. So I probably got three, 400 cigars. But I'm just trying to sell her up on that along with the pipe tobacco because I don't know what's going to happen. They want to tax the hell out of everything. And now they're, I think it was, what was it, Colorado's legislature? They want to ban all flavored tobaccos, whether it's cigars, pipe tobacco, whatever. He likes the Perdomo Maduro packs, Matt Gets. Oh, okay. I'll ask Matt about that. Thank you. Check it out. We, we're in that um, from Cigars International. You can join their Cigar of the Month Club, and I think it's twenty bucks a month. And every every month they send you, I think it's five cigars in the in the box. We showed that on our other video. Four. 
four. Well, that one was four. I think the other one we got was five. But maybe I'm wrong. Whatever. But yeah, so they send you this, which is cool. So it tells you what cigars come in it, and then when you open it up, it it explains each cigar. And uh, my health, twenty bucks a month for four cigars. Can't beat that. It's pretty cheap. We got some good ones in there. Mm -hmm. This is the one I haven't tried yet. And this was rated out of ninety four. La Ranja, La Raja, Espinosa, La Raja, Reserva, Toro. Josie Dad said that's a deal. Yeah, I thought so, man. He's enjoying it. He's getting to try a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it gives you the literature. So it's kind of cool. Then on the back... They advertise different kinds of cigars, Taste of the Month, Man of Wars. And then they have this little thing. It's kind of cigar superstitions. It's kind of funny. But they, they explain like different different stuff, different tools. But it's kind of a joke with it, too. It's, it's pretty cool. It's fun. What has been your favorite? Oh, I haven't even kept track. I don't know. You like this Cuban, huh? It's like right. Cohiba. And isn't it cool? I got a wife that I smoke pipes and cigars with, man. Not too many guys can say that. Yeah, we shoot guns together. Bows and arrows. Go fishing. Her dad was an excellent fly fisherman. That guy was. I used to tease him because I say, Chuck, shit, you'd catch a fish in a bathtub. I mean, this guy... You could be, there'd be 10 people fishing in a spot all day long and not catch a damn thing. He'd go out there and throw in a line and catch something. He just, he was smart though. He, he, he knew the science behind it. That's why he was good. Chuck would go out there with a the fly and start fly fishing. And if he caught a fish, first thing he would do on that first fish is gut it open and open up his stomach and see what bugs that fish was eating. Then he would change his fly to that bug and just start. Then when it would slow down, he cut open another one and check that. Oh, change his fly and just that guy was good, man. Yeah, he was pretty smart. Well, folks, what do we got? We got three o'clock. We've been on for an hour. I think we need to get ready, Mama. Let's yeah. Check that out. Smoking a Cuban. Ain't that some shit, huh? Do I look like Humphrey Bogart? Al Capone. What are you doing over here? Sylvester Stallone. Hey, uh, yo, Adrian, uh, what are you doing, eh? Are you smoking one of my cigars? <laughs> Let's see. AKJ says he's looking into the pipe tobacco industry and not many chemicals added outside of flavorings. Correct. Even the flavoring is pretty natural. Confused on why they think that would do anything for us. You want some good, uh, natural, really, in my opinion, very good tasting tobaccos? LJ Peretti. My favorite is Cambridge Flake. Yeah, I smoked shit out of that. Where's this? I got it right here. That's why I smoke every night before I go to bed. Oh, Jay Brady. Night, huh? Yeah, it used to be full. Is that your sleepy time tobacco? That or quiet nights. I've got three uh, corn cob pipes next to my bed, and I'll sit there and either read. Hey, KJ, so this was great. Had a lot of fun. He met Stallone once. Did you really? How was that? Was great he pretty cool? He's, he was. Yeah, he's a great guy. I met some actors that weren't so great people. Well, I mean, most of them I met are pretty cool. Was that Brian Krantz? Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. He 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 was bumming a cigarette off me one time. This was years ago. From Breaking Bad. Breaking, yeah, he was right in, He was in between takes of filming Breaking and Bad. And other things. But. And uh, I was teasing him. I looked at him. I said, "What the hell? You're some big shot actor. You're a fucking millionaire. Where's your cigarettes?" And he starts laughing. He goes, "Oh, they're back in the trailer on the other side of the hospital." I said, "I'm just kidding, man." I said. And I gave him one. We sat there and talked. It was pretty cool. Oh, oh. Smokey said Stovepipe uploaded a video. AKJ said, yeah, great guy. Cool, oh, man. And he said, I'm... Oh, never mind. I can read that one. Yeah, I think, I think Sylvester Stone would be nice to meet. He seems like a nice person. He's a VIP at Vernon's. Maybe we will one day. Yeah, so where we go to the speakeasy, he's a VIP member. So in Vernon's, if you haven't been there, they got two parts of the restaurant. One is just for normal walk-ins or people that make reservations. The other side is just for VIP only. 
and they got three or four different rooms, guys playing pianos in there, and the lights are real low. It's just like a real speakeasy. It's cool. Then you can walk out on the patio and have a pipe or cigar. That's where we go out there to eat our dinner or eat our uh, dessert and have coffee. But yeah, it's it's a really cool place. All sorts of people been in there. Mm -hmm. More than Sylvester Stallone. There's man, they got a whole wall of celebrities that have been in there. You know, I noticed last time there's Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. I'll be back. Um, and uh all sorts of athletes. I don't know. Football, basketball players. Cold weather where y'all are, I gotta cut grass. Need more places like that, ZKJ. I agree. That's why when we open up our pipe and cigar shop, it's we're gonna have our smoking lounge in our back and it's BYOB. You're an American, you're an adult. Just don't act like a fool and have fun, enjoy yourself. So, well, guys, thank you all very much once again for joining our live. We appreciate it, man. And uh, Stovepipe, you enjoy cutting that grass? I uh, split some wood. Stovepipe asked if we were going to go to any pipe shows. Yeah, I'd like to. It's just with work and, and her work, you know, in our business, it's kind of hard to get away, but. When we open up our pipe and cigar shop, we're going to start our annual pipe show. I don't do pipe and cigar show. I don't care. But like I've said before in other videos, you mark my word, I'm going to make it bigger than Vegas. As long as these dipshits don't mess up the country and the economy, we will. Bill says have fun tonight. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. All right. You want to end it? Say bye sure. to everybody. Thank you guys so much. We'll see night. you next weekend for another live. Y'all care. What's that? Good night. Thanks for the live. I will go and catch up on videos. Excellent. Have fun. Have fun, Smokey. I might go to Las Vegas, so it would be awesome to meet up. So the AKJ right now. Hey, when is that next Vegas show? Dozy Dad. Later, man. He said, bye, have fun, so I don't know if he's going to answer. He might already went off. Oh, okay. September, said Smokey. So, oh, so we got some time to plan that. Maybe. I go back to work by then. So. Oh, that's right. See what I mean, guys? She's off all summer because she works for the schools, and she goes back to school in September. I go back in August. Oh, August. This year, we go back the end of July. Actually. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, AKJ said that he'll email the info to you. Oh, very cool. Thank you. Awesome. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Y'all have a good evening. We'll talk to you later.